Right. So um, we'll we'll wait till four thirty on okay. the dot. One of one of the things that we uh, generally get is quite an influx of people, and also people are partial to complaining if we start any earlier. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So since we have a little bit of time, I'll just briefly tell you. So yeah, I started working with these emails that I've been working with three months ago, but only recently got to the point where I knew enough about HTML to know that I needed to go back to the start sure, and learn yeah. the, 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 the best way to do everything. So that was what going through your course was for me. It was great. It was, it was learning even just just as simple things as, as spacing um, uh, and indenting and and then just kind of best practice learning it from the very beginning how I should be doing this because I, I mean we yeah. had emails with tables within tables within tables it was really helpful because I just went back through my emails and was able to simplify things and make yeah, yeah. the code a lot more condensed and also make a lot more use of CSS we had so many stylings done individually throughout the HTML documents that it was so like clunky but sure, it, yeah, yeah it was really helpful to kind of see the mechanics behind it and go back through what I'd done and, and make the work the work proper no oh, good 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 yeah uh, yeah it's you know HTML and CSS is one of those things that it's it, it can get as complicated as you want it to you know there's so yeah. many layers to it that it's just fantastic. Yeah, for sure. I mean, where, early on, I was kind of inspecting emails that we'd that we'd either received or found that we thought were really interesting, and the amount of CSO uh, CSS on there that was just incredible. But I had no idea what I would do with it. That I just kept so that later down the line, once I knew more what it was about, I would then be able to go. Right, this is really interesting. So sure. it's things like formatting for for different for different um, email servers and things like that. It was great. Yeah, okay, so cool. so we've had twenty something people in the last minute just nice. yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna begin the uh, I'm gonna begin the broadcast now. It's four thirty. Sounds good. Okay, great. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to another webinar. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Chris Misterek who uh, recently wrote a course for us uh, on uh, HTML and CSS and today he's going to uh, be presenting in this webinar on how to learn HTML and CSS. Uh, so Christ Christopher or Chris is a web designer from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, he's passionate about beautiful web design and concise front-end development. Um, I can testify to that. Having been through his course, the, the kind of things that he was telling me was a steep learning curve for me in terms of uh, learning how to, to improve my web design. In his free time, he loves riding bikes with his three girls and making music. He's an, he's an entrepreneur at heart and has built his own web design company from a few clients to a steady stream of projects in just a short amount of time. Uh, I'm going to pass you on to Chris in a moment, who uh, will be taking us in to the end of the webinar from here on out. Uh, I shall join again at the end if there are any questions, if we have time for that kind of discussion. Uh, but from here, I shall pass you along to Chris. So welcome, Chris. Yes, hello, everybody. Uh, so glad that you could join us today. Um, as James was saying, my name is, is Chris, and um, I authored the course Intro to Web Development. And uh, so excited to be with you here today. Um, this is uh, an area that I'm really passionate about, um, not only the aspect of um, learning how to code, learning how to develop, um, but also learning um, how to fit that into uh, your lifestyle. So. Uh, for more opportunities for you, um, it's simply just to learn and be creative for self-improvement um, and to have fun with. So, um, yeah, so I've got quite a few things that I, I kind of want to cover with you. Um, and then hopefully at the very end, um, we'll have time for just a few questions. 
Um, so, but I want to get started. Um, so, uh, as we mentioned, this uh, this course is, uh, or this webinar is a, all about how to learn HTML and CSS. Um, so, uh, if you've done any amount of research, there's a plethora of information on actually learning HTML and CSS and even um, uh, other more complicated languages, um, you know, so there's there's not a, a shortage uh, when it comes to information that is out there. But what I have found is that um, there is a shortage um, when it comes to um, kind of how you should go about learning this stuff. Um, and it's uh, the kind of thing that um, if you're not careful, you can get really disenchanted um, and almost give up um, when, it, in, in my experience, you shouldn't. It's something, this is something that everybody can do. Um, it's not something that is um, too hard to learn or too difficult to grasp. Um, and so, but that being said, there are things that are good to avoid. There's roadblocks that come up. And then there are things that are good to go headlong into. Um, and to uh, try to go about, um, you know, doing in the best way possible. So, uh, so that's what I want to cover here today. Uh, give you a, a little bit about me. Um, I live in the U.S. Um, in a town called Gilbert, Arizona, um, which is a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. It is a desert out here. Um, we have a lot of cactus. It gets very hot, but right now. Um, it's our winter months, and so it feels awesome. Um, so I um, am the father of uh, three little girls, all under the age of 10, as James mentioned. And so there's a lot of princess paraphernalia in my home, and uh, we watch a lot of Disney movies, um, but it's fun. And so uh, here's a picture of my three girls. This is my oldest, Ashlyn, Annabelle, and Sayla. Uh, and then uh, I am actually um, a full-time uh, pastor at a church out here in, in Phoenix called Hillsong. So here uh, you've got me playing guitar uh, during one of our services. So um, this is something, it's not my full-time job, but it's something I, I'm very passionate about. Um, I've built up um, a web design business um, in my free time, so I'm a freelancer. Um, but it's starting to take a good amount of my time. Um, and I, um, my background, um, I got my degree in business management. Um, so coding and web design is not something that um, I necessarily thought that I would be doing. Um, but um, just kind of uh, jumped into it um, out of a suggestion from a friend. Um, and found out that I actually really love it and, and really love enjoying learning how to do it, enjoying uh, actually doing it. And, uh, and so I'm largely self-taught. Um, so hopefully that's an encouragement to some of you out there who, um, you know, feel like uh, you've got to go back to school and you've got to get a degree in computer science or software development. Um, that is not the case uh, for a lot of this stuff. Um, and in fact, um, some of the best uh, software developers that I know are self-taught, and I think the reason for that is um, is because uh, you know you you just have to have a passion to learn this stuff. You have to have some grit and just jumping in and trying to figure it out. So um, I did take one community college class, and I was certified um, through uh, CIW, which is online. Um, as an advanced HTML and CSS specialist. Um, and so uh, what I do with this, I mentioned before, I have uh, um, a web design company called Mystric Web Design. And um, so in a short amount of time, I, I doubled my salary through my part-time um, web design firm. Um, and it's amazing. I get to work when my kids are asleep. I get to work um, uh, at coffee shops uh, with people. Uh, all over the world. And so I say that as an encouragement to you who are uh, trying to go out and better yourselves. Uh, this is doable. It's something that you can figure out. Um, it's something that 
um, as possible in the long scheme of things. So um, if you stick to it and you go for it, um, I think anybody can do it. And, and, and that's really why I'm passionate about um, passing on uh, what I've learned to help other people to be able to do what I've done with code. And I like to tell people it's, it's possible. It's, it's possible to learn HTML and CSS. It's possible to be able to become a developer. Uh, it's possible to be able to grow a, a part-time or even a full-time business um, where you're making a, a good salary that either uh, supplements your income or becomes uh, your full-time income. But uh, that's enough about me. Um, you know, I know you didn't come on to learn all about me. Um, let's dive into some of the things that um, I want to talk to you about today. Um, so there's kind of three areas that I want to discuss when it comes to uh, learning HTML and CSS. The first is ideology. Um, and I feel like this is important um, because uh, if you've taken any web courses before, um, you'll probably find that one of the most difficult things um, uh, that we have when it comes to uh, online courses is actually getting through the material. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but I've signed up for a ton of courses and uh, gone through maybe like one or two modules uh, and then kind of uh, given up. And so I think that um, ideology is an important component when it comes to actually learning this stuff. Um, you know, so another thing is uh, best practices. Um, so um, it's very easy uh, to know a lot about uh, uh, software development, coding, development, uh, HTML and CSS. Um, but what I've found, it's, it's very difficult to know the right things about the right things. Um, and I'll kind of go into more of this. Um, but there's a, a, a lot of um, kind of bad information out there on the internet about um, proper ways to uh, code HTML and CSS. And uh, you'll find as you're learning um, that um, you're just kind of looking for any and every way to solve a problem, not necessarily knowing that there's a much easier way to solve that problem or actually what you've done doesn't really solve the problem for most web browsers. Um, it just solves it for the web browser that you're using. Um, and so there's a, a good deal of best practices to kind of implement um, that's important when you're first getting started. Um, and, and I want to em emphasize first because if you learn ba bad practices at the very beginning, it's very difficult to unlearn those things. Um, I don't know if any of you uh, play um, instruments, um, but um, you know when you learn an instrument, um, if you do it all by ear, um, then going back and, and trying to teach yourself how to learn how to um, read music, um, it's almost near impossible. <laughs> and uh, I actually learned by ear, but had to go back and, and teach myself how to actually read music. Um, and uh, man, I, I was pulling my hair out. And so it would have been much better to start with um, just learning how to do the right things the right way from the very beginning rather than learning it the wrong way and then coming back and relearning myself. So um, best practices. And then finally, I want to talk about uh, some resources for you. Um, there's uh, just a great deal of resources out there on the internet that is helpful um, to uh, learning this stuff. Um, and you know, there's, there really is no excuse to being able to master HTML and CSS on your own because of the amount of resources that are out there. And it's growing exponentially every day um, uh, through uh, companies that are doing courses that, you know, they're hosting courses like I've created with uh, Introduction to Web Development um, and then other uh, resources as well. So uh, I want to show you a few that are good because just like there's best practices and bad practices, there's also good resources and bad resources. Um, so there's some resources out there that um, will uh, put you down the wrong paths or maybe waste your time. And then there's some resources out there that are actually very beneficial 
um, for you to know and for you to navigate uh, towards on a daily basis. So, okay, uh, ideology. So the first thing I want to start with is um, uh, when it comes to ideology is that you really have to start with why you're doing um, what you're doing. Um, you know, uh, because uh, it's, it's going to get difficult at some point when you're learning this stuff. Um, it's inevitable that you're going to come to a roadblock, you're going to want to pull your hair out, you're going to want it to throw your computer uh, at the wall and scream and cuss. And so if, if you don't have a good idea of why it is that you want to learn uh, what it is that you're learning, you're going to opt out at some point. You're going to um, quit the race uh, at some point in time. Um, and so having a good reason to do what you're doing um, is foundational. Um, so uh, the first thing that I found is that, um, number one, I'm really uh, passionate about this stuff. And, and I hope that I can pass on um, some of this passion to you at, in this webinar. Um, you know, there's, no, there's really nothing like being able to code, right? Um, all you need is a computer, a text editor, and a web browser. Like, that is, that is really it. You don't even need a decent computer. Like, uh, you can have a, a busted up computer that is on its last leg, um, and you can still learn how to be proficient um, in software development. In fact, um, you don't even need an internet connection, and, and that seems counterintuitive uh, when we're talking about uh, creating websites. But um, actually, everything that we do in the course, uh, you could do all locally um, outside of having um, an internet connection. Um, and so um, I feel like that's just a, a really cool thing um, because that gives access to uh, people all over the world who have uh, good internet connections or bad internet connections, uh, whether or not you've got an awesome computer that's faster than lightning or if you've got a really slow computer, um, you know, it, it kind of puts it all in your hand. Um, and uh, the sky really is the limit, you know, that uh, it all comes down to your um, uh, ability to be creative and your ability to imagine and to think up different things, um, you know, uh, uh, that's, that's the only barrier uh, to the amount of things that um, you could be able to do um, as a software developer. So um, and another thing about this is that uh, software development really kind of combines uh, a number of different skills. Um, you know, it's kind of a combination between artwork and, and logic puzzles. And so, uh, you know, there's a creative aspect to it, um, you know, being able to uh, think up web design, to think up a web page, to think up a, an application that might be um, hugely uh, beneficial to a lot of people, that could be a game changer um, to a lot of people, um, you know, and so uh, there's creativity involved in it. And then there's also the logic part of it. Um, and I don't know if a lot of you out there love logic puzzles like Sudoku or, uh, you know, crossword puzzles where you're just kind of pulling in um, different aspects of your understanding uh, to kind of create a bigger picture. And, uh, and so that really is um, a good deal of what, what you'll be doing as a software developer. Um, you're kind of taking um, different things that you know, you know, like, okay, so I want to solve this problem. Okay, what do I know about that problem? Well, I know this and this. And so how can I use those two things that I know and come up with a solution uh, to fix this problem? And so logically, you're piecing those puzzles together. And so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun a lot of times. So, um, so then, uh, not only passion, um, but there's also the purpose of what you're doing, the reason um, why it is that you're doing this. So you could be on today and you, you could be saying, I, I, I actually just want to improve myself. Um, I actually just want, I like learning. 
Um, I love increasing my knowledge, and so um, you know, HTML and CSS is something that I've always been interested in. Um, and that's great because there's, there's something really fulfilling about just bettering yourself. You know, and I, I like to think of myself and encourage other people to be a lifetime learner, you know, to uh, not get stuck in what you know now. You know, the, the difference between where you are right now and where you want to be 10 years from now is the things that you know, right? It's the information that uh, you gain. And so, um, you know, why not invest in uh, making yourself better? You know, why not invest in moving uh, yourself down the road when it comes to uh, the goals and the things that you have in life? And that all starts uh, with learning. And you also might say, like, hey, um, I actually want to increase um, my skill set as an employee. And, and what better way to do that than in technology? What better way to do that through, than through the internet? Um, you know, uh, uh, I, I mentioned this in the course, but um, all of us are acutely aware uh, with good and bad web design, right? And so um, there is not uh, a job out there that doesn't have, at least in some form or fashion, um, HTML and CSS as a part of the role uh, that you're playing in. So uh, you might want to be able to improve those skills. Um, so uh, another thing is that um, it, there might be a, a financial component. You might be um, wanting to start your own business. Um, you know, or maybe you're, you've got a business and you're trying to learn how to um, you know, uh, uh, make your own website. And uh, I've actually heard of a bunch of su success stories of people who, um, you know, they just had a, a single idea uh, for a web application um, that they wanted to figure out how to create, but they didn't want to pay thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to hire somebody to do that. So they taught themselves um, and then they actually, you know, created the web app and were very successful uh, through the website that they created um, or, you know, through um, the web uh, website that they made that have people purchasing products um, almost every day. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's not out of the realm of impossibilities when it comes to um, learning this stuff. I, I was just like all of you when I first got started. I had no clue what I was getting into. I, I was unsure about where to start, um, but I just jumped in. Um, and, and here I am today, I've got a successful company, um, and I'm able to pass that along to other people, um, and that's something that I, I love to do. So, uh, yeah, so um, those are some of the things um, behind uh, the purposes. Uh, so, just a, a, a few other things um, behind ideology. Um, the, one of the things that I want to encourage you with is that uh, you can do this. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that uh, if, if I can learn how to do this stuff, um, you can learn how to do this stuff. Uh, there is nothing special about me. Uh, I am not uh, overly intelligent. Um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I have the same amount of hours in the day um, that as everyone else. I'm a very busy single dad. I've got a full-time job. Um, and so I, I know the challenges that face uh, those of us out there who are self-learners who are trying to do this on our own. Um, and, and it's possible. Um, uh, and, and the other thing about this is that um, Starting with HTML and CSS uh, is an important aspect of learning how to do um, even more in-depth um, coding languages like JavaScript and PHP and Ruby and all these different things. Um, and, and the reason for that is that HTML and CSS um, are very intuitive languages. Um, so, and, and what I mean by intuitive is that um, what you would expect to get out of or to put into HTML and CSS is really what you have. 
Um, they're very basic coding languages, um, and I go over this in some of the course, um, and it, that was done on purpose to give access to a lot of people all over the world the ability uh, to view websites and to create websites. Um, so um, the uh, originators of the World Wide Web, uh, guys like Tim Berners-Lee, um, really thought ahead about what they were creating and um, were looking for longevity. And so as a result of that, um, we have a, a, a really cool language uh, through HTML and then in CSS um, that gives you uh, the ability um, you know, to, to really uh, not have a lot of roadblocks um, mentally when it comes to learning this stuff. So um, it's very intuitive. So, and I mentioned this before, um, but inevitably as you're learning, as you're going through the course, um, something will not work the way you think it's supposed to. Um, and you'll have to do quite a good deal of troubleshooting. And, uh, and so uh, don't, don't get frustrated. Uh, don't quit. That's normal. Um, you know, that is uh, just a part of the process of learning um, this stuff. It's a part of the process of uh, going deeper in your knowledge. And so uh, that's not unique to you. Um, so, so keep going. And, and what I tell people, um, you, you win so long as you don't quit. <laughs> and you're successful so long as you don't opt out and give up and say, I've had it, I don't know how to do this stuff. Um, so don't get frustrated, keep going. Another part of that is stop and take breaks. Um, you know, what I've found as I'm working on different websites or working on different components of different websites is that um, you get kind of tunnel vision um, in what you're doing. And it, you know, things uh, start looking more and more difficult, more and more impossible until finally something that's actually a small problem um, becomes this huge issue that takes you hours and hours to try to figure out. Um, and so there's um, kind of some, some practices when it comes to setting up your time. Um, there's um, this uh, idea called uh, the Pomodoro plan, um, which is literally taking like a, a timer and setting it for 15 minute increments and then um, going really hard for 15 minutes and then taking a break for a minute to five minutes. Um, and then going really hard again for another 15 minutes and then taking another break for five minutes. Um, and that just kind of helps your brain to, um, you know, be able to process and be able to learn more new material. Um, uh, psychologists say that um, we retain uh, information best at the beginning of when we try to learn something and at the end of when we're done with a session. And so if you're starting and stopping, you're actually setting yourself up for a better opportunity to retain some of those, uh, some of the information that you're learning versus if you just say, I'm going to hunker through it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for five hours and I'm going to figure this stuff out. You're actually not doing yourself um, a benefit with, with trying to learn that way. Uh, and so take breaks. Um, get some sleep. Um, you know, I often find myself at like two or three in the morning um, about ready to give up on life because I can't figure out a problem that I thought was going to be just an easy solution. Um, but then when I go to bed and I wake up, I realize, okay, I can do this thing. I can figure this out. I go online. I research. I do a little bit more study, and I'm able to process through. Um, so, uh, so you will get frustrated, but um, don't worry. Uh, you will be able to figure this out. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, let's talk about some best practices. So um, again, um, there's things to do and there's um, some routines uh, that it's important to kind of put into place when it comes to learning this stuff. Um, you know, there's some, some practical things uh, like making sure that you're taking time to practice. Um, you will not learn HTML and CSS by watching a course and uh, taking a test. Um, it's just impossible. You, you have to practice this stuff. Practice makes perfect. 
Um, and so what I tell people that are learning and people that I'm coaching is um, to set aside a specific time every day um, to practice um, and be almost religious about making sure that you protect that time. Um, and so again, um, if you can spend an hour, that's great. Uh, but really, 30 minutes is, is a good um, kind of goal to have when it comes to learning this stuff. I'm sure all of you are busy. Uh, you probably have full-time jobs or you're a, a parent. And so uh, 30, minute, I, 30 minutes, I think, is a good um, goal to have. And that's something that one of my coaches um, told me when I was first getting started, that you know, people uh, who come out on the other side having learned this stuff are people that committed to taking just a small amount of time every day um, and just working on this stuff. So there's some practical things like making sure you set yourself a schedule every day um, that at uh, you know 8:30 p.m. when the kids are down in bed, or you know 5 a.m. when nobody's awake yet, I'm going to get up and I'm going to practice this stuff um, because um, you know I, I want to learn this stuff. Um, so make sure that you're practicing every day. Uh, another aspect um, that's good as far as Beck's practices goes is to learn from scratch. I'm going to take a quick drink here. So um, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of resources out there uh, to learn from when it comes to HTML and CSS. And, um, but the best way for you to learn um, is just um, to start um, from the very basics. Start as if you had nothing. You know, like in your, you're in the kitchen and you've got the ingredients, you know, but um, you, you don't have a microwave dinner, right, that you can just pop in and set up for five minutes and then, um, you know, boom, something comes out and you've got chicken and potatoes and you're good. You know, like it's really best to start with like the flour and um, the spices and the olive oil and a frying pan and, you know, that r really makes the best meals. It really makes um, the, the best type of food. And the same is true of um, learning how to code um, HTML and CSS. So, um, so uh, for instance, at first, you want to stay well, stay away um, from frameworks. And so, uh, let me kind of explain that. Um, frameworks are a, a system um, or a um, a group of code um, that other developers have put together, um, where you know a whole bunch of people have said, you know, hey, hey we find ourselves doing the same thing over and over again. You know, like we're typing the same code over and over and again. And so rather than starting from scratch each time, why don't we create a framework that we can just add a class or add an ID um, and then um, just be able to call it real quickly and then learn this, uh, the class or ID system. So uh, the three most popular frameworks are Bootstrap, uh, Foundation 3, and skeleton. And these are all uh, layout frameworks. Um, and so uh, every website that you look at, and I'll share my screen so you can kind of see um, what I'm looking at. Every website, so here's my personal website. Um, uh, this website is made into columns, right? Uh, and Bootstrap puts it into 12 columns that are each um, individually uh, separated with some gaps, uh, and they all have certain widths, right? Um, and so you can tell Bootstrap, I want um, one aspect of this web page to be half of it and another aspect to be another half. Um, and so like you see here, you've got my picture, and then uh, you've got some information over here on the right. And so then what's cool about this is that, um, you know, when a browser um, uh, changes in size, uh, rather than it messing up, it actually will pop, because of the framework that it has, it'll pop over and then becomes responsive. Uh, and responsive web design is hugely important um, in the web design world these days. Um, and so a framework um, takes you from, you know, just 
doing hours and hours of code and recoding to make sure that it's all responsive. Uh, and it kind of just sets it up for you to where uh, you're good to go with just a few um, classes or specific IDs. Um, and so that is what uh, Bootstrap and Skeleton and uh, some of these other things have done. Um, you know, to make it easy for other developers. And so, listen, these, these are great, um, but they're only good once you understand the back end of all of it, right? So if you're working with these things and you start out learning how to do CSS off of Bootstrap, if you ever have any issues, you're not going to be able to troubleshoot. Um, you're not going to be able to figure out uh, what's going on and how to fix it. And so you might create a website for a client and then they come back and they're like, hey, you know, this isn't working right, and I need you to fix this. And then you go, okay, well, actually, I don't even know how to fix that. And that um, makes your client frustrated. It, it means that you have to take more time to figure out things, uh, which means that you aren't making as much money that you wanted to off of the project that you got, uh, so on and so forth. So, um, so start, start with the basics. Uh, start with learning how to do all this stuff. Another reason is that... Um, you might not need some of these frameworks if you're doing a really simple web page. Um, so uh, something that's really important when it comes to web design is the user experience. Um, and some of you might be familiar with that concept. It's uh, uh, shortened to UX. If you've ever seen UX or UI, the UX means user experience. And a user is somebody that is actually using um, the whatever it is that you created, whether it was a website, uh, whether it was an application, whether it's uh, some type of software. And so the experience that that user um, a, uh, is undergoing when they visit or when they use your software is the user experience that they have. Um, and load time uh, is a part of that user experience. So for instance, if I go to a website and it takes like three or four minutes for that website to load, my user experience is bad and I'm out of there, right? Um, and so we want to remove as many barriers uh, from people as possible um, when it comes to creating a website or creating software. Um, and so one of those barriers is the amount of time that people have to spend for a site just to load. Um, and so a framework actually increases the amount of time um, that somebody will have to spend just accessing the content of what it is that you're doing. So if you can avoid using a framework, um, to maybe give your client or your user a half a second extra um, when it comes to um, their website loading, it will be worth it because literally you have maybe a second and a half to two seconds to um, convince somebody that your website is worth sticking around for. Um, so learn frameworks, but only after you've um, learned uh, some of the basics of what it is that you're doing. Um, another thing to kind of stay away from at first is uh, something called preprocessors um, and extensions. Uh, and so what this is, um, there's the basic fundamental language of CSS. Um, and then people, um, after using CSS, um, decided, hey, we, we want to do some stuff that um, maybe CSS um, can't do or maybe it's very difficult to do um, in CSS alone. And so we're going to actually make a sub-language or an extension language, a preprocessor language of CSS to uh, make things easier. Um, and so some of the popular ones are SASS, um, S-A-S-S -S or LESS, L-E-S-S. -S. And so I'll just show you um, kind of some different things. I'm going onto a website called um, CodePen, uh, which I'll kind of talk about. Um, here uh, a little bit. So um, right here you can kind of see the code um, that these guys are working with. You've got three boxes. You've got their HTML, you've got their CSS, and then you've got some JavaScript right here. And up here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, it says CSS, um, but then it says Stylus. Stylus is another uh, preprocessor language like LESS or CSS. Let me go let me go through and see if I can't find somebody who's using, actually using less. Okay, there. Oh, that's the one that I just clicked on. Let's go right here. This is fitting since we just had elections yesterday. Um, so uh, up here you see that 
um, they've got SCSS. This is another popular um, CSS preprocessor. Um, and so this actually looks different than what normal CSS would look like. And then if I go through and if I say I actually don't even want to see the preprocessor, I just want to see what this code looks like all on its own, um, it, it would look very different. And then I'm, I'm not doing it justice because it really, you, it, okay, this guy just used CSS. It really starts to become prevalent whenever somebody uses less or S or SAS. I think this guy is using that. Okay, uh, I don't want to waste too much time trying to look for this. Um, but suffice it to say, um, it's good to know this stuff. Um, and most, oh, here we go, here's some SAS. Um, so here's what it looks like um, with the preprocessor language, but then if I come through and I turn SAS off, Uh, it can kind of look different. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, unsuccessfully, I've not been able to show you the difference. Sorry about that. Uh, mark my word for it. Um, uh, it makes it makes a difference in uh, learning that stuff from scratch, knowing how to do it um, after you've learned the basics of CSS. Um, again, as I was saying. Um, if most web companies will want you to know things like SAS and less, um, but it's much more important to know the basics of CSS. And truth be told, CSS on its own, without any of those things, uh, is extremely powerful. It's a very um, uh, broad language that can do a great deal of things, and I hopefully we'll get some time to show you here in a little bit. Um, okay, so again, um, Learn from scratch. Another thing to stay away from is something called snippets. Uh, snippets is just a group of code um, that some um, very generous person out there has made to um, give away to other people. And they say, hey, I've made some really cool hover effects, and I want to give those away to you guys. And this is very common in the development um, HTML, CSS world. People are happy to give away knowledge. It's a really cool community. Um, and so, um, you know, those types of things are great, um, but again, you want to learn from scratch. You want to learn the basics. Um, and then I would say once you get it all down, um, that's when it's kind of important to dive into some of these other things. Um, so go for it after you feel like you've really got a strong grasp of the fundamentals. Um, and so that's why I felt like it was really important to first teach, um, you know, the fundamentals of web development with HTML and CSS before uh, we throw courses at you like uh, some of these other things like working with frameworks and SAS and LESS and all those other things. So, uh, so start from scratch. Finally, um, another thing when it comes to best practices is less is more. Um, so the more you can do with less, uh, the better of a developer that you are, um, right? So um, there's some really complicated ways to do things. Um, but then there's some very uncomplicated ways to do things that when you actually look at it, you're like, wow, that's, that actually takes a great deal of knowledge to be able to do what I did with 100 lines of code just in like 15 lines of code. Uh, for instance, I'll show you a site here, and I'll show you the back-end code of it all. Um, so uh, this is a website that was made completely in HTML and CSS, um, and you can kind of see the power of what you can do with HTML and CSS. And so I'll show you um, just the, the basic uh, CSS that they use on this, on this web page. And it's extremely minimal. Open up my text editor here. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff so you all can see it. So um, of that entire page, there's only 194 lines of CSS. Um, and once you start developing, you'll actually find that that is incredible. To be able to do all of these things um, with just 194 lines of CSS 
um, is phenomenal. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you research companies like Mozilla, um, if you start going on their sites for learning how to do CSS and HTML and stuff, um, that they'll they have slo they have slogans like. Um, Hi Chris, sorry sorry to interrupt. Sure, um, I'm sorry. I just had a couple of people mention they can't see uh, your screen, and your screen seems to be stuck on the uh, code pen, as far as I can see. Um, so okay. just in the last couple of seconds, it hasn't moved. I wonder if there's anything that sure. anything. Is, is this better now? Yes, much better. Okay, uh, there great. You go. Okay, sorry about Thank that, you. everybody. No, 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 no problem. I'm going to mute myself again. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, um, again, so I'm sorry about that. Here is uh, the web page that I was talking about. Um, and as you can see, uh, there's just a great deal that's going on. Um, and believe it or not, this is all HTML and CSS. There's no JavaScript. Um, there's no PHP, there's no Ruby, uh, there's nothing like that. And from all of um, that's happening, I'll, I wanted to show you the code so you can kind of see. There's just 194 lines of code. And again, um, uh, this is something that is really important to try to uh, maintain as a developer, that less is more. Mozilla says, live more, code less. You know, So that's not to say that you don't um, you know, spend less time coding, but that you spend less time doing the things that uh, would normally take you a ton of time. So, okay. Uh, now let's move on into some resources. Pull these up here. Um, so, resources are a great way um, to, um, you know, figure out what you're doing and how to do it. Um, you know, inevitably you will come across something that you've never seen before and you'll have to figure out um, how to learn, how to be a self-learner and just learn how to do it without having anybody actually there with you showing you. Um, and so it's important to have a good group of resources that are uh, just on your queue or um, that you have saved as a bookmark on your web, on your web browser uh, to be able to click a button and then uh, boom, you're there. So. There are um, three um, types of resources. There's one uh, that is just for help. You know, you've got a problem. Um, you don't know how to fix it. And so there's some resources for help. Then there's resources for inspiration, uh, which is really important. And finally, there's some resources for tools. Um, and I'm going to kind of try to blow through this um, so that we can maybe get to some questions. I realize I'm, I'm going long. Sorry for my long windedness. Um, so, for the help aspect, um, there is a website uh, that's super important. It's called Stack Overflow, and I've got that pulled up here. So I'll just um, so Stack Overflow is essentially a group of developers um, who are posting questions um, and answering questions, um, and so it's important to. Um, I think have an account on Stack Overflow to go on um, to um, uh, look for different questions that um, you might be faced with. Um, scrolling through here, you can see there's a great um, deal of different questions that people are asking, um, you know, all over the place. From um, you know, like here's some JavaScript. JavaScript. There's some server side stuff. Um, here's uh, uh, Bootstrap question like we were talking about before. And so you can kind of go on here uh, and see, okay, um, this guy is using Bootstrap 3 and he's having an issue with a uh, multi-select being sized smaller than the width of its long, longest item. And so people come on here and they'll uh, re reply uh, with responses. And then once the answer um, is given, um, it'll actually show up below. And then it'll tell you, okay, here's what you need to do. And then uh, the person who uh, initially posted the uh, question will be able to say, okay, yes, that answered my question. And so then it gets a green check mark. Um, and many, many, many of the questions that I've had have been answered um, through other people's questions on um, uh, Stack Overflow. Not even questions, I didn't even post them, I just searched long enough and found the one that I was looking for and found the one that actually, um, you know, 
gave me uh, the answers that I needed. So, uh, so sign up for Stack Overflow. Another good learning tool is uh, W3Schools. Um, they have all sorts of uh, different um, information on different languages and different types of things. You see they've got server side here, they've got JavaScript, and then they've got CSS and HTML. And so um, not a very good learning tool when it comes to uh, teaching yourself because it's very boring and it's not very interactive. Um, but it's great for um, when you forget something or when you're going through the course and you're like, oh, what was that one thing that Chris said about that one thing? Um, you can either go back and look through the module or you can just search through W3Schools and go, oh, okay, here we go. Here's the uh, CSS. Um, you know, so it's got like um, the box model here. Um, it's got the different things. And then um, they actually have like a little playground where you can um, try out different things and, and mess around with the different code. So um, like for instance here, they, they styled their text um, with the color blue. So if I wanted to change this um, to, uh, let's just say red, I could. I change it to red, I hit run, and then the font changes uh, to red. So um, kind of a cool thing to work through. Um, all right, so uh, when it comes to inspiration, uh, which was our second type of resource, uh, there's some great things out there. I kind of showed you one. Um, there is one called Zen Garden, um, and essentially it's just a group of developers um, who set out to show um, all the things that you could do uh, with HTML and CSS alone. So these developers came on and said, okay, I'm going to make websites that are solely HTML and CSS. And you can see how cool um, these websites or these web pages are. Um, and so you can kind of get a feel for what you're capable of doing um, just by going through here. So um, you saw the text kind of load with a cool fade in, um, which is really neat. You kind of see the, um, the scrolling background that's coming along with you. It's kind of got a parallax effect. Um, you know, this is all really neat stuff um, that, you know, unless you, I think sometimes when you look at websites, if you don't know what's going on, you can kind of go, oh man, that's way too complicated. There's no way I'm going to be able to figure out how to do that. And then when you look at the website and you look at the code and go, oh, actually, here's all the code. That's not a big deal. I can figure that out. Um, so it's great inspiration. Uh, and then finally, I showed it before, but CodePen is another great thing. Um, people are coming on and um, you know putting different things that they've done uh, with HTML and CSS and um, different... Uh, uh, you know, uh, JavaScript and all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of see that, um, you know, it's pretty fun that they just look through it and then you can go, okay, cool, look, they didn't use a ton of code, but yet they've got a really cool looking uh, website here. So, or a web page here. So um, CodePen is great. And I kind of mentioned, um, it's also really cool when it comes to like, if you're working on a website and you just want to figure out something real quick, you can pop up a CodePen and then go, okay, here's my HTML, blah, 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 here's my CSS, blah, 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 um, and then, uh, you know, it just kind of does it all for you. And then you can mess around with other people's code, too, so, uh, you know, for instance, I just got rid of everything that that person did, and then I just brought it back. Okay, moving on. Um, so, I mentioned CSS Garden and CodePen. Um, okay, so for tools, um, another important tool is uh, W3C Market Validation. Um, this is kind of just more the uh, business side of everything you're doing. Uh, you can actually upload your files. Um, so if you create an HTML document, you can upload it here and then send it through the check and it will actually check this for you. Tell you, hey, this line here is wrong, you need to fix this. This line here is wrong, you need to fix this. Or, uh, this will, won't display well on all the browsers, so you might want to consider doing this differently. Um, so that's a great tool. Um, and then another tool is uh, actually just your web browser. Um, the Chrome Dev Tools are just fantastic, um, and I'll kind of just touch over these uh, real briefly. But these will help you, like, um, say you go to a website and you want to figure out how they did something. Um, yeah, so with Chrome. DevTools, you can do that. Um, so, for instance, here's my website. 
if I want to look at the back end code of this, I just go to View, Developer, and then View Source. And then it'll pull up. Here's all the HTML uh, for my web page, right? And so you can see the different things that um, I've done. So here you can see, like, okay, here's some JavaScript. Um, and this is uh, for the slider. It, it uh, shows the animation. And it's like, okay, they're using Flex Slider, which is um, a different framework that somebody created. So then you can research Flex Slider. Like, okay, that's a cool slider, so I'm going to research that. Um, um, so in that sense, it's invaluable. Another thing is that you can actually um, inspect different elements. So I highlighted all this text, and then I'm just going to right-click all this stuff, and then I'm going to hit Inspect. I'll pull this window op over here. Um, so here you see a whole bunch of different options. I'll move this out of the way so you guys can get a better idea. Um, so you've got a whole bunch of uh, different things. Um, you've got uh, different screen sizes that you can kind of jump to. So we went from a 1440 pixel screen size, which is a, a larger size screen. Um, and then we go down to like smaller screen sizes. So you can see how your website's going to adjust. Um, you know, here's like a, um, a tablet size, 768. And then we go down to a phone size. Um, so you can just kind of scroll through. And you can also have different um, devices that you can, um, uh, you know, pull up your website with to see how it might look on a different device, like an iPhone. So you can go through and go, okay, uh, actually, when we're on a mobile phone, like this gets uh, really misconstrued. It goes all over the place. Like even right now, I'm looking at this map, and um, it's not showing the full map. So um, or it's not showing the right map. It's not showing the right address. So I need to go back through and um, figure that out. So um, yeah, so it shows you how that works. Another really cool thing is that um, you can select different elements and see what their HTML and CSS is. So um, right up here, I just clicked the uh, select tool. And then I can go down and actually just kind of scroll through each element of the web page. Um, and then you'll see it kind of changing over here. Um, you know, it's, it's changing based on what I'm scrolling over. So let me... Um, click one of these guys. So, so then this is a filter that can filter through um, the different uh, projects that I have. Um, and so it's just got that HTML aspect. And then right here is all of uh, the CSS aspects of what it is that we're looking at. So um, just real basically, like here's a big section right here. And it's got a lot of child elements down here underneath. And so you can kind of see some um, different uh, or some of the basic CSS stuff. And then you can actually go through here and make some changes. Like let's say I wanted to change the background color of that to red. Okay, like I can go through and I can change it to red. And then Chrome actually changes it um, to be able to um, show the um, different changes that you've made on the code side. Um, and so, yeah, so that's a great tool for figuring out how to do different things. Um, I often will um, you know, do as much as I can without opening my web browser um, on the CSS and HTML side. And then when I open my web browser, I'll go through and be like, okay, that's not working right. What's going on there? Okay, actually, um, there's a huge amount of padding over here that you can kind of see in it um, on this one element. So you see on the uh, far right side, there's kind of an orange-brown um, color uh, section, and that's um, padding, and then the green is the margin, and so you're like, okay, wow, that's way too much padding. Um, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to take off that padding, right? Um, so I'm going to move this container to zero. I'm like, oh, okay, that's actually looking better. Um, and then you could say, like, actually, I want this to be, I want the width to be much bigger, so I'm going to come through. Uh, I'm going to make it um, 1300 pixels wide versus 1120. Um, and so now when you look at it, um, it's actually changed um, what it looks like when we scroll through. So this container, uh, the um, padding got smaller, so on and so forth. So um, just, a, just a great tool to be able to troubleshoot and even um, to, to figure out how to do different things. So 
and then uh, obviously you're just changing it locally like I didn't change my website when I did that um, or else everybody can mess with anyone else's website so if you want to you just come back through hit refresh and uh, and there you go so uh, those are some of the resources um, finally just real quick um, number one it's really important as you're learning this stuff to build community um, to get people around you that are doing this together uh, with you. Um, there's nothing like a tribe to be able to share frustrations, um, to be able to um, get insight, to be able to ask questions. Um, and so, um, you know, there's, there's great um, things out there for you to be able to do that with. Um, one great resource is meetup.com um, where people go on, they'll create groups and say, hey, I'm interested in doing X, Y, and Z. Um, and so you'll be able to find tons of different things for HTML and CSS development in your area. So go um, and show up and just be a part of these meetup groups and figure out if you can't find somebody that um, is willing to take you on as a mentor mentee or um, is willing to help you out if you have a few questions. I thankfully have had um, a few people who have just been instrumental, um, who have, have been my go-to people when I'm like, hey, I can't figure this out, what should I do? and then they kind of point me in the right direction and then I'm able to figure that out. Um, uh, I, another thing uh, is when it comes to ideology is uh, just jump into it. You know, don't be afraid to just try to figure things out. Um, one of the things I did at the very beginning was um, I would just try to find websites that I liked um, and then I would try to make a website that looked exactly like that from scratch. Um, you know, so for instance, um, CSS Garden is a great place to start um, because these websites are not complicated. You don't want to start out with anything crazy. Um, but, um, you know, you can come through and say, okay, I really like the way this looks. And so I'm actually just going to go through and I'm going to see if I can make this, um, make a website that looks just exactly like that, um, you know, without looking at the, the code. You know, I'm just going to try to do it straight from my brain, um, nothing crazy. Um, and just um, figure it out. So, so yeah, just jump in. Um, there's, there's no easy way to do it. Um, you just kind of have to bite the bullet and get going. So, again, uh, thank you guys so much for being on this webinar with me. Um, we've got a little bit of time for some questions, um, and, and then um, I think we'll be done. Chris, I was hoping, actually, that you could uh, do me a favor for some of the the uh, beginners, if you like, for some of the people who sure. are really, really early on in in their HTML kind of CSS career or, or hobby or whatever it may be, um, and just just in a text editor because we I, I know that we have quite a scope of people. Here. I think it would be interesting for some people to see how easy it, it can be. To create, I mean, uh, we, so we looked at the, the uh, WC3 school and, and looked at the the text which you changed red. It's it, it sounds very simple, but if you could go through just the process of from starting with your doc sure. type and your HTML type, just to show somebody how you could create text and and change it first in HTML and then second of all in CSS will we'll sure. be will be fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, um, we go over a lot of this um, in the course, um, you know. But essentially, it's it's super simple, and I'll just I'll just rush through so you can kind of see. Um, so, is everybody seeing my screen there, James? Uh, as far as I know, yeah, I can certainly okay. see it. So so that's great. Great. So I've got my text editor here, and I'm using Atom. Uh, there's a whole bunch of popular text editors for you to choose from. Um, so I'm just going to create a new document, um, and then I'm going to set up my document by doc type HTML. And I'm going to come through and HTML, and then I'll just set up a real simple um, uh, paragraph, right? So I'll say this is a paragraph. And then I close out my um, paragraph tag. So then I'm going to come through. I'm going to save my document. And I'll just throw this on my desktop. And I'm going to call it index.html. OK? So now when I go to uh, my desktop, 
there's my index.html. Then all I have to do is double click, and then up in my web browser, um, it shows the paragraph that I just wrote, right? Um, so super simple, super easy. Um, and then to link um, your, uh, like if you wanted to add some stylings to it, um, there's a few ways to do it, few ways to do it, sorry. Um, so I'll show you the way of linking a CSS document. Um, so I'm going to add a head and then a body. And then I'm actually going to link a um, CSS file. So link, and then our relationship is that it is a style sheet. Type CSS slash text, and then we're just going to say main dot CSS. And again, um, don't be overwhelmed by this. We go we go through all of this step by step in the course. So then I'm going to save that, and then I'm actually going to come through and I'm going to make another file. I'm going to add it to my desktop. And I'm going to call it what I called it um, in my document, and I'm going to call it main.css. Um, and so then, um, through my CSS selector of paragraph, since we have a paragraph element or paragraph tag in my HTML document, I'm going to come through and I'm going to say I want all paragraphs to be a font size of 100 pixels. Now I'm going to save that, go back to my web browser, and I've done something incorrectly. <laughs> so let me see if I can figure this out. You know what, I'm going to go through, oh, I just wiped off my computer, so I wouldn't have this. Um, but suffice it to say, um, once you get it linked through, um, you should be able to uh, essentially just uh, make all of these different um, you know, different uh, changes with the different things. So I'll go through and I'll actually do some inline CSS. So in my paragraph tag, I'll say style, and then I'm going to say font-size, 100 pixels, close it off with a semicolon, and then I'm going to save it. And there we go. Now we've got the font size that um, has been saved uh, or been made to 100 pixels. So now let's say I want to give this paragraph a background Let's be specific. Let's say color of blue. Now it has a background of blue. So now you can see, we didn't, without even using our CSS file, um, we were actually able to um, uh, make a you know, basic web page. I mean, we have a web page right here. And we've got uh, 15 lines of code. So it's very simple. So I hope that's helpful, James. That's what you're looking for. That is absolutely perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. So thank you very much for that. Um, well, yeah, we're six we're six minutes over. So I think at this point we'll 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 look to wrap it up. Um, okay. If an, if anybody does want to uh, take a look at the course that Chris wrote, um, I've been through it myself actually because it's something that I have to do. Uh, just send an email to me um, at info at webinarsteam dot com, uh, and I can I can send you a link to that. Um, I'd very much recommend it for those who are looking to learn this kind of HTML and CSS that Chris has been going through. Um, but on that note, yeah, I think we shall end. We have another webinar coming up next week, uh, which is members only, which is uh, which is going to be on uh, getting the most or get getting started rather with Office 365. So I suppose I shall uh, speak to anybody who's listening then. Uh, so thank you very much, Chris, and uh, for everybody yes, else, you. have a really nice week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.